Hey there, comic book fans. I am back from the comic shop again this week, a day late. Um, it's Thursday instead of Wednesday because UPS didn't deliver the comics to my, uh, to my comic shop until last night or something. So couldn't pick them up Wednesday. Uh, got four of them. But first, let me show you my top of the printer. Museum covers for a week here. I just kind of wanted a Conan cover and this is issue 102. And I had to look up who the inker was. My friend Ed was just visiting me today. He got it in two two guesses. I had to look it up. But I was like, hmm, John Buscema. I'm not sure who's inking him. It's Al Milgram. No, I don't often see Al Milgram over John Buscema. And the other one, of course, is Grendel, Matt Wagner. Nice and shiny. Looking good in his uh, tuxedo and cane with his Grendel mask on. These, these sitting on top of my printer all week. Now it's time to replace them with two others. Let's see what we got. Oh, no comic shop weekly this week. Uh, comic shop news this week. Didn't come in. But I did, since I only had four comics, I decided to get stock up on some bags. Uh, it's funny. I used to just have a pack of 100 there. Now it's like every time I use up the pack of 100, I have I now have like 100 and something sitting around. Because it uh, used to have, you know, a bit of pack of 100, then they'd whittle down, and I'd get a new pack when they were running out. Now I get a new pack when two packs away run out. So now it's like I got just opening up a pack of 100, and I got a new pack of 100. I, I, I don't know. Because it makes me feel better to have an extra 100 comic bags lying around. Spawn 330. Nice Spawn cover there. I like that one. Let's see. Who did this cover? Barberry. I guess um, the the interior artist this is. This must be cover A. Barberry. Our writer is Rory McConville. Some big Spawn war going on. I don't know. Like I said, I, I buy this one because it's the last of the 299 comics. Never been a big Spawn fan, but it's okay. I, I do like that cover, I have to say. They did, did, a nice, did a fun job with the cape on that cover. So that's good stuff. What else do we have? We've got the second issue of Twig. I'm still not sure if this is going to make it on my pull list permanently. I think I only put the second issue on my pull list for now. We'll see how this one goes. I liked the first issue. I really liked the art. The story was you know, an okay fantasy story, just the opening part of what seemed like it's going to be much bigger. And it's got a sort of young adult vibe to it. I don't know if it's a, I don't know if it's supposed to be an all ages story or not. Let's see, what's the rating on it? Rated T for teen. So I guess it's semi all ages, not really all ages, teen. Um, but I really liked the art in this. But who's the art? It's uh, Scotty Young is writing it. Kyle Stram and is drawn by, and the coloring is uh, Jean-Francois Beaulieu. So there we go. It's, uh, I enjoyed the first issue, but I was kind of like, I don't, I don't really know if I'm going to like the story, but the art was so strong. I was like, ooh, is this, if they put out like an oversized hardcover of this, I think the art would look really nice, but I'm like, I mean, this issue I'll decide whether I want, also, I don't know how long it's going to be, but good stuff. The the art's really beautiful. That's kind of why I why I liked it and bought a second issue. Then we got Time Before Time by McConville. Who's doing this one? Rory McConville, writer. Ron Salas, artist. Chris O'Halloran, colorist. Hassan Atsami Elahu, letterer. Issue thirteen. Yeah. Pretty good run of time before time so far. Our our time travel story with our guy trying to escape the gangsters who run the time travel uh, uh, time travel gang. Uh, what, uh, the time travel scam. I don't know what it was. Yeah, racket. There we go. The time travel racket. Not sure who that is. He looks new. But it's been an enjoyable series. I'm usually not a huge fan of time travel stories, but this one, like the time travel, is just kind of the background to the story. That uh, I'm actually most time travel stories I'm okay with, if you set up some rules and stick to them. Quite often, time travel stories set up some rules and then don't stick to them, and that drives me crazy. But I like it when they set up and stick to them. And here, it, bagged and boarded for some reason. I don't know why. The Lion and the Eagle, number four. Four of four. This is the one. Um, let me open her up. 
got a label on it. Peel that off. I don't know if that's a removable label or not, but it felt like it was a removable. P.J. Holden is the artist, who I think did the last issue of Time After Time, or Time Before Time, that was before, yeah, Time Before Time. Story of um, British soldiers and uh, British and Indian soldiers fighting in Burma in 1943 or 44. I forget which year now, but it's a, it's not a fun place to be. But this is our fourth and final issue in this um, from Aftershock. What was this one? Seven, eight dollars. Uh, I've enjoyed the, I've en, I've enjoyed this format from Aftershock. I'm I'm like I've said before, I'm not a big square bound guy, but I'm okay with the square bound and like the graphic novel album size uh, more than the comic book size because it opens up better. Like the square bound and the comic book size just doesn't open up well enough for me. Uh, and and it's been a fun story. Like the I've been buying the aftershock one shocks one shots and which I thought this was at first, then it turned out to be a four shot. Uh, just because I like the done in one format, and I, I like that this is you know a f done in four format, so that's cool too. Oversized prestige format miniseries. Ooh, prestige. Garth Innes and P.J. Holden. And good British war story. And it's, you know, no holds barred. Gives you the ugly side of war. Uh, you know, as they say, uh, any war story told realistically is going to be an anti-war story. So that's kind of what this is. <laughs> <coughs> Pardon me. I need a sip of something. Wait right there. I've been doing a lot of talking this afternoon, so. Ah, so I, so my throat's a little dry. So there we go, Lion and the Eagle, good. I still haven't gotten my shorted copy of whatever that Savage Dragon one shot was last week, but I guess it'll be coming next week. And let me show you a little bit of stuff I've been doing. Oh, all I do that I have to tell you, there's gonna be no show on my channel tomorrow night. I won't be around. Uh, I don't know if anyone will be around tomorrow night, but we'll pick up again next week. So there'll be no Cavern of Chaos Friday this Friday night, but we'll pick up again next Friday night. So it's all right. <laughs> Here's one of my Gatsby illustrations I just finished. That's Daisy down there, and Gatsby in the pink and Tom in the brown. And it took me a long time to figure out that suit technique, which is sort of a Art Deco weird art deco technique that Frank Cho has been doing a lot of in recent years. I must have drawn those suits up. It wasn't, I had the details of them correct, but they looked so boring. I tried to fix it with the color, you know, makes an interesting color technique and it looks so boring. So I finally went with this art deco line technique. And I think it came out okay. Stand in front of some modernist sculpture I don't know. Just a fun Gatsby drawing. <coughs> Part of my illustrations. Then I also did these two. Ink them. A couple of dreams of things. These really need color. I can, you know, sometimes like uh, I do these dreams of things and they look fine to me in black and white. And sometimes like I really need to fill that in with color. It'll make a lot more sense when it's filled with color. All right, so there you go. Only four comics this week, some bags, and some art to show you. Have a good one.